Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. Let's begin by reading from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I want to talk to you a few moments about some truths for times of temptation. One truth is this. No one is immune to temptation. The important thing when we deal with temptation is to realize that we always have a choice and that God gives us a way of escape in each and every time of temptation. Jesus himself was not exempt from temptation. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11 said, Then Jesus, when he was led up of the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was after the hundred hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then when the devil had taken him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. There's a venerable uh, fabled story, a legend that the trees of the forest gather together to have a meeting uh, to discuss ways to unite uh, against a very sharp axe that had cut down so many of their friends. There was the oak, the maple, the spruce, the poplar, one by one, the axe had sliced them in to pieces and cut them down for firewood. The remaining trees has ha had had enough, the story goes, and they agreed that they would no longer supply wood for the axe handle. Not a single piece of wood for any axe handle. It seemed like a wise and a safe plan. But the axe had found a way to be a part of the tree's gathering. And before the meeting was adjourned, the axe asked to speak and was reluctantly given the opportunity to talk. With moving eloquence, the axe said that he had agreed that enough was enough. He was given just one more, if he was given just one more piece of wood for a new axe handle, he promised to only cut brush and scrub plants so that the elegance of the trees could be seen by everyone. With smooth words, the axe 
said everything that flattered the trees and convinced them to give him the wood needed for one last handle. Then, just as you've no doubt already figured out, as soon as the new handle was in place, the axe began chopping down as many trees as possible as quickly as he could. The trees begin to loudly complain about his lies and deception. The ax said plainly, You knew what I was when you saw me. How could you expect any other conclusion? Why did you trust me? Indeed, why does temptation, <coughs> pardon me, why does temptation seem to seem so safe when you're being tempted? Think about that a moment. Why do we allow ourselves to be convinced that things will be different this time than what it's been in the past when we gave in to temptation? Scripture teaches us something important, and Jesus is the one who sets the premise when he says, it is written. And it says that the devil, Satan, the world, and our own human nature, the flesh, conspires against us constantly. You cannot trust Satan. You cannot trust the world. And you cannot trust human nature. We need to always remember that. We are not immune to temptation. And if we put ourselves in a place to be tempted, we are really setting ourselves up to fail again. We must learn how to deal with temptation and learn what environment and circumstances is going to be conducive to cause temptation. Uh, first, let's examine what's the most common temptations that come to us in our day today. Uh, they may not be what you think. The five most com common temptations today for most people are anxiety, worry, secondly, pro procrastination, third, eating too much or eating the wrong things. Fourth, overusing media, internet, social media. And fifth, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, financial laziness. Wow. Now I would not before have, having studied and put this together have thought that those would be the primary and foremost temptations to mankind today. But now that we've talked about it, you can see where that is a reality. The Church of the Middle, Middle Ages uh, had a fable through the centuries about a monk. He was a great man of faith and had great and good intentions, but he fell to disgraceful humiliating sin and instead of acknowledging his personal responsibility for the sin the monk complained bitterly to the devil what business do you have tempting a man of God to which Satan replied what business does a man of God have being in my territory. The monk said, What business, Satan, do you have tempting a man of God? And Satan said to the monk, What business do you have being in my territory and being a man of God? Why do we put why do we put ourselves in a place where we can be tempted? That's a question that we need to examine. We need to learn where the boundaries are and 
you and I understand who know the Lord, that those boundaries are not set by us or others. They have been set by God. He teaches us in his word what the boundaries are. That's why Jesus said when he was taken and tempted, the word says, scripture says, it is written what we are to do and not to do. Uh, where the line is, who do we listen to? And we should not ever listen to beguiling words. They're leading us away from what Scripture teaches. Scripture tells us when it comes to truth and right, let God be true and right and every man a liar. So it really sets the stage of understanding that we're not to turn to one another or anyone in the world, the flesh, Satan, or the things of the world, but we're to turn our attention and turn our heart to learn about dis discipline and discretion to keep ourselves from being tempted and failing. Number two, that moves us to a second principle that uh, helps us when we are tempted when the devil went to tip Jesus in the wilderness, uh, there was no one else there to support him. No one else to encourage him. No one to help guide him. No one to pray with him or for him. It's interesting when Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, prior to being crucified, he took his disciples with him. That's important to note. In the wilderness, he was utterly alone. And he might have looked back at that and realized that for the disciples to learn anything, he needed to take them with him during this next time of temptation where he was tempted to not become a sacrifice, but to take authority over the evil and the lying people who had falsely accused him and save himself. He said, come, pray with me. And that's very important in times of trouble and temptation. We don't try to handle it alone. We need to come with godly counsel, get into the word, meditate, pray, fast, but also have others pray with us and pray for us. Hold us accountable. Amen. Uh, was it accidental that the devil tempted Jesus when he was alone? No, it was a trap. Uh, it was planned and calculated. That's why the world and government and politicians and people who have ulterior motives set us up by tempting us to take things that once we take it, then they are going to make us dependent upon them and we'll have no choice because we gave up our liberty and freedom by following their lies and deceit. The third truth that's important are the words of Jesus used to dismiss the devil when he said, Be gone, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So serving self or serving the world or serving Satan or following the appetites of the flesh and ungodliness uh, is a way of a form of worship, idol worship, and disobedience to the teachings of God that we need to keep our focus upon the Lord and our heart turned toward him. The word's very clear and it can be very effective and powerful in our lives if we will believe it and follow it in the times of temptation. He has called us by our name, scripture says, before the foundation of the world to be his children. And then when we are born into this world, all the voices from every direction imaginable, and some we don't even realize are there, are coming to lure us away from our faith in God and from the plan that he has for our lives. And uh, it always has been that way since the Garden of Eden with beguiling words, Satan deceived Eve and then Eve gave to Adam. They took the forbidden fruit and sin came into the world upon all mankind. The seed for yielding to temptation had been planted. And uh, if I could end here 
for the last few moments of our study, uh, there's one final truth that I want to share with you. And it's, it's written in the words of Luke's gospel. The final words are chilling when it says, when the devil had ended every temptation, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. <laughs> there in the wilderness, after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and separation from all the voices of the world, Satan came to tempt him. And it says, And after every temptation had ended, he left Jesus to wait for an opportune time. And he came back to him in the Garden of Eden. So important that we think about the words of Jesus when it came to that moment where he said, Father, if it be willing, let this cup pass from me. What was the cup? The cup of suffering and sorrow, the cup of bearing the sins of the world, the cup of rejection, the cup of loneliness, the cup of being lied about. I mean, it's full of so many things that we don't have time to add it with adequately talk about today but he was tempted to walk away say father is there another way that this can be done is there another way to bring forgiveness and grace and mercy to the world to cleanse men from their sins but thank god that jesus did not give in to that he said not not my will not what I desire, not what I want, not what I'm feeling, but thy will be done. The plan of God, the will of God, the, pl the purposes of God. Lord, let that be done. As long as we have life, we are going to be tempted. And many have done so well for the greater part of their life. And then near the end, the enemy would come in and when they feel like they've got it all wrapped up and everything's under control and there's nothing to deal with and they're up in older years or feel like they're beyond temptation, all of a sudden something happens and they give in, unprepared and unexpecting of how the enemy, the world, and their own flesh would work in times of temptation. And, and, and Satan does that. He waits till an opportune time, a time where we're more vulnerable than ever before, and then he brings the temptation to try to destroy our relationship with God. Not always in the same way does it happen. Not always the same temptation. It's many different things and some things that we may have never been th thought about or tempted by before in our life. He may wait for that opportune time and bring that temptation. We need to be constantly in prayer and very diligent to put ourselves under the scrutiny of God's word and under the direction of God's spirit. For at our weakest moment, that opportune time, Satan will come and he will do his best to devastate our lives through spiritual failure, through disobedience. The end of Moses' life, when he became so tired and frustrated and had led the people all those years, oh my goodness, uh, and the Lord spoke to him again, uh, speak to the rock. And Moses took the rod and smote it in anger. Uh, he gave way to temptation to be frustrated with his responsibility and frustrated with God's telling him to do things that he felt was really unnecessary, knowing that God could do anything he became frustrated and vented his anger. You'll be tempted when you least expect it. At the opportune time that Satan can see that you're most vulnerable. May you and I, like Jesus, when we are tempted, find strength and grace to help in the time of need. I pray that for you. I pray that for myself. Uh, pray that God's word will be the rock on which we stand. Pray that our Heavenly Father will strengthen us and that the Spirit will abide with us and increase our faith. 
Matthew 6, 13, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Luke 8, 13, They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Oh God, help us to get ourselves rooted and grounded, not just laying on a surface and the temptation and the sun and the birds and everything else come to separate us from God. Luke eleven four, forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And Luke twenty two forty, and when he was at that place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. There in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was feeling it. He was in the midst of humanly about to walk away. And he said, Guys, you need to pray that you enter not into temptation. And we close with this, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I pray for victory in your hour of temptation. May God be with you, strengthen you, and bless you, and keep you in all your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful rest of your day.